Now, Mr. Tritz, the guy that you just saw up there, if you're watching this uh, on the screen, he's now 90 years old. And as he was being interviewed, he said, it isn't so good up here, he said, as he pointed to his head, tapped his head. The VA's use of lobotomy, in which doctors severed connections between parts of the brain that were then thought to control emotion, was known in medical circles in the late 1940s and early 1950s as occasionally cited in medical texts, but the VA's practices were never publicized. They were long ago pulled out of the public's view. Now, here's what he underwent before they gave him the lobotomy. He underwent 28 rounds of electroshock therapy, and they point out in the article, this is a common treatment that sometimes caused convulsions that were so jarring that they broke patients' bones. Can you imagine that? This poor fellow had spent three years in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. He was so physically and psychologically damaged by that that they put him in a hospital. And this is what our government did to this fellow who fought for them when he came back. You talk about betrayal, about a World War II vets, about Captain America, that type of thing. And we're going to talk about the super soldier thing coming up here. But they gave him electroshock therapy that sometimes caused convulsions so bad that it broke patients' bones. Then, to stimulate patients' nerves, hospital staff also commonly sprayed veterans with powerful jets of alternating hot and cold water, show the archives. This particular fellow, Mr. Tritz, got 66 treatments of high-pressure water sprays that they called the Scotch Douche and the Needle Shower. His medical records show that. Now... That's what they did to veterans back then. And of course, this is, uh, they also have a story of many, many veterans and things that happened to them. What are they doing today? Well, today they're giving them SSRI drugs. And the SSRI drugs do the same thing to veterans that they do to people who are not in the military. They make them suicidal. They exacerbate, in many cases, the medical conditions that they're trying to treat. They make people suicidal. They make them homicidal. They have them sleepwalking where they don't know what they're doing. They take actions that they are not aware of. Where are we going with this? Well, Obama has just doubled down on funding for something they call the BRAIN Initiative. Now, the government always loves to do these acronyms. They, they come up with the acronym and then they fill it in. You know, if you don't like the government, they accuse you of, of uh, being odd, ODD. That's Oppositional Defiant Disorder. Well, in this particular case, BRAIN stands for Brain Research Through Advancing Innovative Neurotechnologies. So that's their B-R-A-I-N. And what they are planning to do is to develop with DARPA and the National Institute of Health a toolbox of technologies to map the brain's circuitry, to measure activity in brain circuits, to probe how these circuits lead to unique human cognition and behavior. Now, of course, DARPA has said that they want to use this as a way to treat PTSD. They believe that they can go in and selectively delete memories. That they can go in and give you memories that did not previously exist. And this is the stuff that we have seen before in science fiction, isn't it? Philip K. Dick's Total Recall, where they give people memories that they didn't have before. Playing with people's comprehension of reality, playing with their memories. If they're going to do this in a benevolent way to soldiers, could not they do it in a malevolent way to dissidents, to also the soldiers themselves? Maybe giving them a memory of shooting Osama bin Laden that they really didn't happen or whatever. It's a very troubling thing to see the government doing this. And it's a very troubling thing to see DARPA involved in this. DARPA is always, as we pointed out, as we we're talking about before, when we we're talking about Captain America, it seems like they are always involved in the worst and the darkest ways of applying technology. All technology is, is a tool. And like any tool, it can be used in a good way or it can be used in a bad way. You can take a hammer and you can use it to drive a nail into a board, or you can take a hammer and you can kill people with it. DARPA takes the hammers and they hit people in the head with it. That's what they are about. And that's what we're seeing the funding is being doubled down on that. And it's, it's a very disturbing thing to, to see them moving in that direction. But there's an even more disturbing story about DARPA. This is one that we linked to on InfoWars uh, yesterday. It's actually a story from a, a place called IO9. And they talk about DARPA's new biotech division wants to create a transhuman future. I'm going to have to 
return with that right after the break. But, you know, we've talked about how frightening these robots that we see DARPA developing are. We see them developing robots that can run faster than humans. And we see them developing robots that can uh, uh, do things with superhuman strength, but they're looking to create flesh and blood robots. That's the most disturbing thing, and we're going to have that information right after the break. How can you save a ton of money and prepare for emergencies? By having your own in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. Now you can cut down on wasted food by freeze drying your leftovers. That's right. Create your own long-term food storage by freeze drying your own fruits, meats, vegetables, even complete meals with the Harvest Right in-home freeze dryer. Imagine the savings and the peace of mind. See how the amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer works at HarvestRight.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you, has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927. 866-229-0927. Or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. Attention gun owners, it's reasonable to assume that at some point you may need to defend your family from an armed attack. But is it reasonable to mount a defense without a strong offense? Infidel Body Armor goes on in seconds, is civilian legal in all 50 states, is 100% made in the USA, is veteran owned, and ships next business day for free. Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com. I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions, silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. In the last in the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today, but we're going to be joined at the bottom of the hour with Alex Jones' special report on climate change. So stay tuned. Don't miss that. Now, just before the break, we were talking about the sad history of 
the American VA Association, uh, the, the Veterans Administration, and the way they treated returning World War II vets, giving many of the ones who had the, the greatest problems, giving them shock treatment, violent shock treatment, hitting them with hot and cold jets of water, and then ultimately giving them lobotomies. What are they doing today? They're doing that in a much more subtle, much more high-tech way. They're doing it with SSRI drugs, and they're doing that to a lot of people in society. And so we should look very carefully at future treatments that they're planning. And, of course, DARPA is looking to, as they say, they're doing brain research because they just want to help us. They just want to help soldiers who have PTSD. And so they're going to selectively be able to remove memories or to implant new memories of things that you never did. That's what DARPA is trying to do. And they're trying to do a lot besides that. We've reported and, and we just showed you a picture up there. If you're watching a picture of the robots that are being developed by DARPA. And of course, when they develop these robots, they say, well, this is all so that we can use them to help in the Fukushima disaster. Well, if they're so concerned about the Fukushima disaster, then maybe the Defense Department shouldn't have sent the soldier, the sailors on the USS Reagan into dangerous territory and left them there for a couple of days. There's a mass of soldiers, just a, I guess it's been three years now, that are coming down with cancer already because of that treatment. But of course, the robots are not there to attack you. It's not part of some new kind of um, real world realization of Terminator. No, they're there to protect us all from Fukushima. And the new super soldiers that they're creating and the uh, brain projects where they want to remove some memories and selectively implant others, that's not going to be used against dissidents. That's not going to be used against the general population. That's just to help some selected soldiers who have to, who are, who are struggling with PTSD. And of course, there is a massive brain research project that's being conducted uh, internationally and just in the U.S. It's called the Brain Initiative, and Obama just doubled the funding for that. But as we were going to break, I was just starting to talk about this article that was linked on InfoWars, DARPA's new biotech division wants to create a transhuman future. Yes, that's right. You think the super soldier program in Captain America is science fiction? It is much, much worse than that. Now, what they're talking about is basically making human robots. That's where it's all headed. But they point out, they put a nice spin on it in this report, because this is kind of uh, the people who wrote this, even though they're giving you a lot of links, a lot of data, it's really kind of more of a sci-fi website, more of a popular science type of website. They're not going to question the ethics of what could be done. And that's what's really the problem. So often we have scientists who do not question the ethics of what they're going to be doing. We see a lot of movie themes where you have soldiers who were, or, or uh, police officers who were brought into some kind of a... Um, uh, criminal or operation that the government is doing or that criminal elements within the government are doing and they don't, aren't really fully aware of how they're being used. Or you have uh, stories that talk about the false narratives that got us into the Iraq war and how soldiers there were just trying to do the right thing. They didn't realize how they were being used. But we have only had, as far as I know, recently there's only been one movie, it's one of the Bourne movies, where you actually had a scientist kind of back off and, and question for a moment what they were doing. And if you remember, there was a scene where, as uh, it was in the last uh, Bourne movie, uh, he's on the run and he's got the scientist who was part of the mental research. Again, it was a brain program. And he asks her about what the research that she was involved in. And, and she gets real excited talking about the technical details because it's really kind of an intellectual puzzle for her that she likes to solve. And then he's... She grad he gradually brings her to the realization of the ethical consequences of what she's doing. So many times scientists don't look at that, but let's look at what they're actually talking about doing, just apart from the ethics here. It says that they're going to be dealing with everything from stopping plagues to building synthetic soldiers. Well, that's what they would like us to think. It says DARPA has been busy exploring the increasingly dynamic intersection of biology and physical sciences. That's a quote from DARPA. Uh, I guess you could say they're going to boldly go where no one with ethics would tr uh, would want to go. And uh, then they talk next about the transhuman soldier, 
advanced prosthetics featuring mind-controlled limbs, neural interfaces, the ability to survive blood loss. And then we get in.